Microsoft Fabric is an end-to-end -end platform for data analysis as well as data engineering. In this video, I'm going to talk about what are the different components. There are nine of them, including who should be learning this. And this will also be the typical use case of using Microsoft Fabric and also end-to-end -end if you're preparing for the certification about DP700, which is the Microsoft certified uh, Fabric data engineering or data engineering on Microsoft Fabric, as well as DP600, which is the data analysis or Microsoft certified uh, Fabric data analyst, then this video will be useful. This is also, I'm going to keep it beginner friendly and high level as well. So come with that expectation as well. Now, if you're new to this channel, my name is Atul. I've been in IT for more than two and a half decades. I've started my career as a database administrator and been helped, I've myself gone from earning less than $100 a month to earning in excess of thousands of pounds a day here in the UK as well. And also helped thousands of individuals like you to get certified in cloud data, data engineering, um, as well as not only to get certified, but get a high paying job as well. Also towards end or below this video, I'm going to share the links, whatever links I've used in a document. So you can download the document and play with that. If you have any questions, related to that or if you have any follow-up questions do let me know and in the subsequent videos i'm going to go and create a this microsoft fabric account so you can practice and play this as well also we're going to start a series on dp 700 first and then dp 600 if you want to learn that with that let's go straight on to the video now as i said it's basically end-to-end -end platform which is used for analytics as well as data management i've already logged into the system so i'll just show it to you how you'll be doing and logging in is app.fabric.microsoft.com and this is the home page through which you create and do a lot of other things which we'll be seeing various of these components which we'll see that in a minute here so what exactly it does it basically brings data integration data engineering data science data real-time analytics as well as business intelligence into one single platform as you see here everything we are doing it from one single platform here there's a concept called workspace which we'll cover i'll cover in future videos related to this microsoft fabric that you see now also design what the main purpose of this uh, fabric service is to harness the power of data into turn into an actionable insight which means that what how you can live what has been done based on that data what the results you came and you can predict future things using machine learning and other things which will cover as well now who should you be who should be learning this microsoft fabric as i said anyone and everyone who's working on data be it business analyst or a data analyst who will be creating a beautiful dashboards, understanding the requirement from the business and then building the reports and dashboards as well. Also data engineers who will be managing the entire data flows, data pipelines and preparing the data for use by maybe uh, uh, other data analyst or as well as the data in, uh, data scientist as well as a lot of other useful also be useful for bi developer who are basically creating models optimizing reports and also reporting purpose using tools like power bi or, or, or tableau or other services as well you'll also be useful for cloud data as well as database administrator who manages the necessary infrastructure be it compute or data part or storage part within the microsoft fabrics capacity as well also for data stewards basically to make sure that data quality is intact it's compliant metadata is or using the governance tool that comes with microsoft fabric also you might have heard if you're coming from that microsoft purview which probably i'll cover that separately for data governance and a security point as well also for bi developers creating and models optimizing the queries managing enterprise level reporting solutions using power bi as a set bi developer or BI data analyst as well also useful for data analyst or sorry data scientist and or for someone who's working on ai and machine learning you will see later what well, the microsoft uh, also has uh, the machine learning uh, ml studio using that ml studio you can create machine learning models so it's basically integrated now you can leverage of those building and deploying machine learning models using that azure ml studio as well also for decision makers on data anyone to uh, do the actionable insights and informed decisions based on the reports based on the data being outputted by data scientists data analysts as well as business intelligence guys as well now again this is something which i'll probably cover later this is uh we go when we go for data part we'll be going extensively on this report this is mainly for machine learning uh, models the workflow and life cycle of machine learning as well now it's basically it's a one single platform you can think of from an entire data data part as well and you can read some of these things as well now what are the benefits i'll keep keep it short quick on efficient because you have one single platform that will cycle on 
time and complexity there are different different systems that we will see later on the part of components that will bring one platform to do all your work as well also scalability you can start with small and you can grow as scale as big as you will see with some of the features that you have also cost effective it's a pricing model which is a go pay as you go model to um, more advanced uh, pricing model that will cover when we go into fabric later in the data part as well also you can integrate with other third party tools including microsoft 365 and there are a lot of integrations you will see later and finally it's a very user friendly pre built templates both for technical users as well as non technical users when you start using them that's when you will see how quick and easy this tool is to use now how you probably might be a use case typically let's suppose and this is there are other uh, different industry wide use cases which will cover towards uh, when i look at the fast components there is a industry specific solutions that will go deeper but you assume you are working on a retail uh, industry so um and the actual requirement for the retail chain is to analyze the customer's purchase power and improve sales based on what they're purchasing and how they're purchasing so what microsoft fabric that does is there's one component called data factory which is mainly for etl tool extract transform and load bring the data from different sources and push it into a single data store or which will say lake house or one lake in that case uh, for it will pull the data from a different systems or sources like cash registers ecoms loyalty programs different systems as well then you have a uh, data engineering component of microsoft fabric which will clean the data and transform the data as well also we have a data warehouse solution or within that microsoft fabric that will be organizing and um at the structured kind of a data in for analysis part then you have real time analytics which is again one of the components which will track any live sales, sales that are coming um on a real time basis as well and then you have a power bi part uh, which is basically creating the dashboards using tools like power bi as i said um for uh, and so so that will be useful for management layer to check where the sales are coming where should we be more which product is selling more and so on so these are some one of the very basic use case and there are a lot more advanced cases in different industries as well now with that let's look at the various components of this one leg that you see or oh, sorry the component so this is high level you can think of you have microsoft purview which is another service for data governance compliance security part on top of that one leg which is the heart and soul of this where a single platform which we'll talk about then you have a copilot which is introduced as a ai tool you might have think of which will help you all best making best use of and then on top of that these are the various components like our data factory when a fabric you have data engineering data warehouse data science real time intelligence power bi as well as the industry specific solutions that you see so with that let's look at these of each of these one by one so first is about one lake which is as i said heart and soul which is a single unified uh, logical data lake now what is data lake you can read further but as we go later we are going to go and um see on data part what exactly is data lake but it's a repository for data for in a stored in a un, or natural raw format of data so you'll have data lake um and the data is coming from different different systems that you do now it basically uh you by default it creates one um for each tenant that you create or each uh, every time you create a microsoft fabric tenant it will basically you get automatically this one lake automatically comes with that now this one lake is built on top of adls which is a my already as your data lake service uh, um, which is available you can do it separately as well that comes and it uses that also if you want to read more about one lake you can read i'm going to point out these documents you can refer to these documents on this on this link here as well then you have a second component which, which is data factory and again there is a separate product individually you can have a azure data factory or as data factory in a microsoft fabric environment which is used for ingesting the data which is data coming from different sources um and then um extra run a extract transform load into data pipelines and there are within fabrics a data factory there are two parts or two components main one is data flow and second is data pipelines so now it leverages in data flow and what are the data flows again as i said there'll be references again don't go keep it high level later in the subsequent uh, uh, data related things we are going to go deeper into um, but this is just i've given you to prep you if you want to go re read more now there are more than 300 plus transformations which as i said is for mainly for data flows transformations allowed for etl part for uh, which will in the context of data designer which will cover later as well also there are predefined now AI based data transformations uh, which is used by 
Um, as we said earlier here, this co-pilot in Fabric that will be leveraging AI tools as well. Now, second is data pipelines and end to end data pipelines that you can create. Again, what is a data pipeline? We'll cover that when we go deeper into these uh, data related parts or data engineering part. So it basically out of the box, data pipelines, orchestration to see how the data will move from one system to another system and based on your workflows, based on the enterprise need that you do. Also, it basically uses Power Query. Now, again, if you're new to the, uh, the Power Query, what actually is Power Query, you can read more. Again, keep it high level for now, but for the document, um, uh, you will learn and understand this. But then also, it comes with native connectors to integrate for using for Power, power Query to integrate with, with various different sources that are available from which data can be originated. Now, again, if you want to know more about Data Fabric, or data factory, sorry, data factory in Microsoft Fabric, you can read and understand these things as well here. Now with that, the third component is data engineering um, and it provides basically Apache Spark based platform for uh, for end-to-end -end data authoring. There's, it has a lake house, which is a combination of data lake as well as data warehouse. Uh, you have uh, notebooks uh, to do the task or activities, and then you have a Spark jobs, data pipelines, and you can bring all. So what is Spark again? Um, again, in data, uh, it's an open source Apache Spark for large scale data and data analytics. Again, we're going to cover when we go into the data part uh, later. Now, uh, what is the main purpose of this? You have a huge amount of data. You create, manage, and optimize the underlying infrastructure to collect, store, and process this data, large amount of data. Again, we'll go deeper into these things as well. Now, Fabric Spark, um, it integrates with Data Factory, which we saw earlier for ETL tools to you for you to schedule, orchestrate um, notebooks as well as Spark jobs and workflows that you see. Again, more about Data Fabric, Data Engineering, uh, you can check out here what I'll do. Later when we do is a part of this um, uh, fabric, we'll go and create these actual jobs and tasks that you see later part. Um, so with that, the next component is Fabric's Data Warehouse basically. So you have a structured Data Warehouse solutions um, basically that's being built into this uh, um, Microsoft Fabric. Let me stop these first, uh, these close these. So the fourth component is Fabric Data Warehouse, which as we said, uh, for a structured uh, uh, data warehouse, for a structured data. And what you do is it basically separates, you have a compute, which is nothing but your CPU and the memory uh, with the underlying storage. So you can scale storage or compute separately for that. Um, and again, as I said, we'll go deeper into as we understand for data variance solution as well. Now this stores natively the data in an open uh, data lake format. Now what the data lake format is, there's a acid properties, which is atomicity, consistency, isolation, durability. Again, we'll go and data concepts when you go deeper into data, that's will you will understand it as well. So it basically stores the data into Delta Lake format. Now, what is Delta Lake? Which we'll see, you can read out more about Delta Lake. Again, in data concepts, we're going to go deeper and understand this as well. Now, if you want to know more about Data Warehouse, uh, this is the link that you see to read more about Data Warehouse. And as we go forward, we'll go deeper and deeper into these concepts. Again, I'm keeping it high level for now because it's a beginner's overview concept. And then later, we'll when you perform these extensive hands-on labs in the data-related program, you will go deeper as well. Now, this is for data. Fifth component is Fabrics Data Science, mainly for AI and machine learning. So anyone who's working on to develop, build or develop or deploy, and then operate these machine learning models on Microsoft Fabric. So much, uh, whether you're working on uh, uh, MLOps or DevOps, but on machine learning or building and deploying, that's where you'll be using this, this thing as well. So it basically, this Fabric, it integrates with Azure Machine Learning, there's a ML Studio. And when we go, I'm talking about ML, there are two parts, which will be OpenAI, as well as uh, the Machine Learning uh, ML Studio, which we'll talk about later. So it basically uses Azure Machine Learning of, to provide uh, the experimental tracking as well as model registry. So whatever experiments you can run, you can track and see and progress about them, as well as there's a model registry. So all those models that you develop, they are stored in a registry and can and then deployed on environments across environments. So it basically does uh, integrates with uh, Fabric uh, Data Science, basically integrates with these uh, machine learning as well as these features that are come. Now, this is useful for data scientists who are working with business analysts uh, or data analyst uh, to build a BI report um, uh, as well. So this is a shift typically happening for descriptive 
to a predictive insight, which means descriptive is all about what happened in the past. Uh, and then uh, pres- uh, predictive is based on the data that happened, what you can predict in future, which is more on a going from a data analyst to data scientist role as well. Now, if you want to know more about what is data science on Microsoft Fabric, again, click on this link so you can understand more about this as well. Now, the component number six is a real time insights. So uh, if event driven data is coming on a real time there's event driven uh, systems that are coming maybe coming from a, your, uh, your your car diagnostics or maybe on temperature sensors or a lot of things that you can come which is the streaming data which is uh, as well as the data logs and so underlying here you have a one lake data hub uh, which basically then so using this uh, real time intelligence you're bringing actionable insights visualization as well as data in motion which is data real time data coming um, and for right from a storage to transformation to analytics to visualization for mainly for real time actions as well. Uh, so there's a real time hub, which is basically which stores the data in a single place uh, for real time data as well. Now it connects from various different sources. These are the different sources uh, that you can use it for. Like you can do from a other cloud providers like Google or AWS. It can also come data from a Kafka uh, clusters data. Also, if there is any database uh, systems you're running and data is coming, you can it can use uh, change data capture, uh, CDC components with each of these databases. Also, uh, streaming sources as well as Fabric and Azure events as well it can integrate with. Again, what is real time uh, intelligence within Fabric? You can click here and read more about this part as well. And then uh, the seventh component is Power BI. Um, it basically in a, integrates and connects with Power BI for business intelligence. If you've not worked off, it's kind of a tableau or click view uh, Power BI for data visualization and data reporting, graphs, charts uh, that help management to decide based on the data output that you've been doing uh, as well. Now, what is Power BI? If you're new to Power BI, you should be learning if you're working on data, as especially as a data analyst or a BI developer. And if you're a BI developer, you probably might already be knowing. If not, you will learn this. And then eighth component is a databases and uh, it's mainly for relational databases. That's where I started my career back in 2000 for more than a two, two and a half decades now. So this is mainly for relational database where the data is structured in databases, oh, sorry, the tables and um, rows and columns in a tabular format. So basically uh, for transitional databases some, such as Azure SQL databases. Um, so basically you can bring your open, operational databases into Fabric. Also, there is a mirroring capability, which I think currently at the time of recording, this is preview on, yeah, so this is preview. This is in beta version right now, but there'll be, you can bring entire data, uh, operational data into this Microsoft here using the mirroring capability. So you can bring it to one lake in, from the sources like as your SQL database or Cosmos DB or Databricks or Snowflake or Fabric SQL instances as well. Now you can read more about this as well. And the f- ninth and final component is about industry solution, which means whatever industry solutions at the time of recording this, I've just given you four, but there are more use cases coming from the manufacturing industry or retail industry or sustainability, uh, especially that's a lot of coming, uh, which is about environmental, social and governance, as well as healthcare industry. Again, I'm not, not going to go deeper if you have a specific industry in which you're working, probably definitely have a look at that as well for more about these industry specific solutions uh, that you want to do. Now, uh, below this video, there's a references that I've used um, on. And with that, we are going to also look at the Microsoft Fabric, which is DP700 and DP600 uh, as well. I'm going to link both the URLs of DP600, DP700, how to prepare for data scientist, sorry, uh, uh, data engineer, Microsoft Surface Fabrics data engineer, as, as well as data analyst on uh, below this video as well. But that's enough pretty much for now. Again, as I said, I wanted to keep it high level. In later, as, as we go into data, you're going to go deeper and learning each of these, including some extensive hands-on labs in the data part that you see um, as well. So click on this below this video uh, to see if you have, if you need any other help on that. But just keep it high level for now. Later, we're going to learn how to create a fabric account, how to navigate this, how to create workspaces and use all of these services which I mentioned. But with that, this is Atul from Team Keaton Academy. Um, um, I'll look forward to see you in the next video. Take care and bye for now.